Hello everybody, Ralph Perez here, um, Ref21 Films. I'm making this quick video. I'll try to make it quick. It's been a while. Rev21 Films, my Catholic channel. Uh, I have a couple of channels. Uh, one about music, one about horror movies. Car and Coffee, if you may have heard of it. But here on this channel, I like to <clears throat> express my faith as a Catholic because I believe in my heart of hearts that um, the Catholic faith is the faith that Jesus Christ himself founded. And, um, you know, and that, that's been a journey for me that spans over 30 years now in my life. I'm 51 now, so I'm a little bit over half time at this point of this uh, great pilgrimage that's called my life. And I wanted to put out uh, this message. No, no graphics. No, you know, I'll, I'll do that on other stuff. This is kind of like just talking from the hip. Um regarding the events of 2020 the events of the last couple months like for instance the election right and the things i've heard so much over the last few months particularly after the election my head is like a little messed up um i just want to say that i think what's happening here is something in this world is something I've never seen before in all my years. Let me give you some background. When I was about 16 years old, I was reading a lot of books by a, a end, end time um, uh, evangelist by the name of Hal Lindsey. Some of you may be familiar with the name. He wrote a famous book in the 1960s called The Late Great Planet Earth. And it was it made the New York Times bestseller list because people were so fascinated by the concept of how the world would end and everything and um you know he came out with many books I, I read most of his books growing up and i really bought into a lot of the things he said like i'll give you an example he wrote a book called the 1980s countdown to armageddon and i read this book during the 1980s right in the mid 80s and it talked about how um that that was, he believed in the book that that was the um, decade where we would see all the things that hap that the Bible predicted in the book of Revelation would actually come to pass. You know, we, you know, we were in the height of the Cold War at this point, um, or nearing its end, so to speak. Um, you know, and there was a lot of talk, a lot of talk about all this stuff. And, you know, and then he wrote other books about the rapture and, you know, and I actually had a... A sense that he, he gave me a, a kind of like a hope that I would never know that if, if the rapture were to happen in my lifetime, I would not know what it would be like to die physically, grow old or die. Because if the rapture were to happen today, I would just be taken up like I would disappear along with billions of others from the planet at that moment. You've seen you've read the Left Behind books by um, Tim LaHale and Jerry Jenkins and stuff like that, that, you know kind of touches on all of that and and what bugs me out is that you know th th with the idea of end time scenarios there's always this sensationalism that's always attached to it as i got older and i realized first of all how these belief systems of end time scenarios were not only theologically flawed they were fundamentally flawed even from a biblical level and i could do another video about that because there's so much information i learned um, about how all this stuff, rapture, tribulation, and, you know, seven-year peace treaty in the Middle East with, you know, it's all there. And so, you know, if, if you read any Hal Lindsey book, if you read the Left Behind series, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, and it's almost kind of like crying wolf, right? It's like crying wolf because, you, you know, it's like the boy who cried wolf. He's crying that the wolf is coming, but he's really not coming. Okay, until, until the time comes when he, he does. And then I started reading up on Catholic prophecy, you know, the visions of Fatima, um, uh, the visions of La Salette, uh, Pope Leo XIII's vision of Satan's threat to destroy the church in a hundred years' time, uh, that, which that vision happened in the late 1800s, going into the 20th century, so you can only imagine 
with all the wars that happened in the 20th century, all the chaos that ensued, you know, the, uh, you know, and now here we are again, year 2020, we're in the middle of a global pandemic, a pandemic where people are like saying, you know, what's going on? Is this the end? Right? We have, a, and I've been following these people for years, so this, this, this is not something that I was following when back in March when all this started. But for years, um, I've been following various uh, traditionalist Catholic um, people like uh, LifeSite News, like Church Militant, like uh, David, um, I'm sorry, not David, Taylor Marshall, a uh, great guy. I think he's a great guy. And the biggest thing that they've been like really beaming about or losing their minds about this past year specifically was the presidential elections. Okay. About this whole thing about, you know, like I'm going to try to sum it, sum it real quick that if Trump were to lose to Biden and, and come out and Kamala Harris, that we would be plunged into some kind of a socialist country where it would eventually grow into a communist country where our freedoms of, of faith, of, of religious practice would be taken away from us. Kind of like the Soviet Union all over again in 1918 when the, after the Bolshevik Revolution. In a nutshell, that's what they're saying will happen. You know, that, and, and with every news story that they put out there, it's always about, okay, they're going to do it like this, they're going to do it like that. The big thing now is what's called the Great Reset, okay? They're talking about the, you know, and, and I've heard about it. I've, I've heard this, you know, they, they, the Great Reset is this whole thing about, a, you know, uh, af because of the virus, of what it has done to the global economy in general, to all, these na all the nations of the world in various ways, that even after the vaccine is distributed, and they're talking about vaccines now, that it's going to, all of this is going to give way to a, uh, some kind of a dissolution, a d dissolving of borders between nations that will eventually become a one world government, a one world state, <laughs> uh, a new world order, so to speak. You know, I remember President Bush talking about a new world order, uh, the, uh, uh, the dad, President Bush, not George W., uh, the other guy. God rest his soul. You know, he's talked about that right after the Gulf War back in 1990. And there was this whole thing about that. And then I started feeling it again. The sensationalists, end times mentality vibes. So here are these guys. They're talking about this. I see David Marshall. He talks about what Pope Francis is advocating. He's advocating for this. And he get, they, it's not like they don't have any... Proof. They're offering, they're showing stuff that make me go, oh, dang, you know, like it's, there might be something to this. But here's the problem. Nobody, not, the only people that are really paying attention are, are the Catholics that are straight up in belief with them or are in not any way, shape, or form believing it at all and consider them all to be nut jobs. Now, which one is it? Either now I I need to be practical in my mindset because I've always been fascinated by end time prophecy. And I know what what scripture talks about, you know, regarding the end uh of of days. A lot of it is really more based in Second Thessalonians chapter two. When Paul talks about the son of perdition, that after, you know, he who restrains him will be put out of the way. And there's a lot of interpretations of that, that this great apostasy will happen, this falling away, this great rebellion will occur. Later on, Paul talks, I believe, in Timothy, in one of the letters of Timothy, where he talks about the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine but will only hear what their itching ears want, want to hear and will um, turn to fables, that there will be deceiving spirits um, spreading lies, okay? 
And, you know, and I believe that will happen. All right. I believe it's happening now in so many ways. There's so many lies out there. All right. We are living in a relativistic society where truth as it at its core foundation has been shunned. Okay, it's not about anymore what the truth is. It's not about absolute values anymore. It's all about what your opinion is. And we have to respect your opinion and we don't want to hurt your feelings. Right? And I think, in my opinion, that's a lot of crap. Because what they're really setting up is a, a world where if you don't allow truth to be the anchor, it's eventually going to be faded out and phased out. Right. So, you know, and I think this is what Taylor Marshall and Michael Voris from Church of Militan and uh, Michael Bat from The Remnant and other people are, are like bringing up in their in their videos here online. However, I, for me, I don't look at it that way. I don't look at it as as somebody who um, is going to hysterically announced this simply because Biden won the presidency, all right? The big predict, you know, uh, the big prediction here is that Biden will eventually resign his post because of his age, and Kamala Harris will resume the presidency, being the first woman president of the United States because she's the one that's the most anti-Catholic. She has a very anti-Catholic disposition to, you know, regarding abortion, regarding, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know, you hear what I'm saying, like abortion and all that. And, and that's, and I get that. I, I, I get that. But it's not like we haven't had presidents like that before, you know, that we're good for that. We're okay with that. So I'm trying to see where is, where is the line drawn? And here's my thing. I've decided, I, I thought about this. I prayed a lot about it. I've decided that I'm going to give these people that I've been following and trusting in their word about definitely about the, uh, the the scandals in the church. I'm I'm on board with that. But this whole thing about the, the United States is going to become a communist state and 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 the new world order and we're going to be persecuted is going to be a, a uh, a, a light persecution at first, and then it's going to evolve into like you know we're going to be sent to camps and all that. I mean, they're you know they some of them have mentioned that, and I'm like, dang, you know, I'm raising kids here, and we're talking about this. So, okay, I've decided, and I'm going to say this right now on December twelfth, twenty twenty, right the twilight of this year, of this crazy year, um, that I'm going to give these guys four years, about which is the time of the first term of this man's presidency, Joe Biden, to see if any of their predictions come true. Because their predictions are, you know, everything I just said. Persecution, communist nation, and every, we're, we're all going to hell in a handbasket, right? That Satan is, is, is waging his last formidable offense against God. And that we are in the end times and, and the church will undergo a persecution. You know, um, and undergo her own Via de la Rosa, like Jesus did. Um, that is certain. That will happen. The question is when? Are we at that time? I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and say it's going to happen because I don't know. You know, I'm 51. I could live to be 81 and die at 81 and be like, oh, okay, I guess it didn't happen in my lifetime. Right? Right? Because how Lindsay, who was young and he wrote all these books about the rapture happening at his time, he was saying back in 1970 that the rapture could come at any moment. And we need to be ready to meet the Lord in the air. We will not know what it's like to die physically, right? He would say that. But now, if you go to his Hal Lindsey Report website, which I go, he'd be like, he's like 90-something now going, any day now, the rapture will die. I'm like, oh, man, dude, I don't think you're going to make it. <laughs> you know, and I don't mean to be mean about it, but I'm like, uh, you know, mm. I think you might have been wrong about that. 
Okay, first of all, the rapture wasn't even taught until like less than 200 years ago, like 150 tops. You know, how do you square a belief like that that's only 150 years old with the true beliefs of the church, of Christianity in general, spanning back 2,000 years? That's a problem. But again, I digress. That's a that's another topic. If in four years, nothing like that has happened, that, that the United States is still the United States, the land of the free, home of the brave, we still have our religious freedoms. Yes, we're going to continue to fight the fight against the, the rights of the unborn and the euthanized and all that stuff. Yeah, that's happening now. That's been happening. And we're going to keep doing that. Fine. I'm on board with that. But if it doesn't get to this communist thing that they're talking about. If that doesn't happen after four years, the time of a, you know, I, I, I will tell you right now, I will disavow these people as being like crazy or something. Like, how could you be saying all this stuff? And, you know, you, all right, fine. I hear it. The Great Reset. That, that has my attention. I ain't going to front. That has my attention. The Great Reset. Right, where they're talking about making all these changes. But is that really going to happen? Like, can they really do something like that? That's radical, man. So, again, you know, you might, maybe, it might be a term that should only be taken with, with the greatest thought. Or it could be something very serious and dark and scary and something to think about. And yeah, maybe we are coming to that time. But I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. And guess what? They don't know either. They're just speculating. And they're fear-mongering. That's what my wife calls it, fear-mongering. And that, as soon as she said that word, fear-mongering, it, I, rem I remembered the first thing I, the first person I thought about was Hal Lindsey. I'm like, yeah, he did that too. And look at that. Nothing happened. <laughs> I'm like, all right. So now what? Well, here's what I think we should do. We're in Advent, the season of Advent. We are preparing for the coming of Jesus. We come, This is our the time of the church calendar of the church year where we are not only supposed to be preparing for the arrival of Jesus in, in the whole idea of the Christmas story of the incarnation that we celebrate on Christmas Day, which is a couple weeks away, but... It's also a time of us wanting to um, hasten, that we beg God to hasten his second coming. Let him come back, you know, and, and let, let it be the most glorious day. And whether we're here on earth or not, or we're dead and buried before that happens, we're all going to witness it. Because when Jesus comes back, that <laughs> the resurrection will occur. And... Everything will be dissolved away and be given away by fire and purified, just like Peter says in his letters. What are we going to be when that moment comes? What are we going to be doing when Jesus returns? Or I can even ask this question, what are we going to be doing when we go to meet him? Whether we're on a deathbed or whether we get hit by a bus. What are we going to be doing? What are we going to be thinking? What are we going to be really making as the thing that matters the most in our lives? See, I'm not the kind of person that believes that going to Mass every Sunday is is just the same thing as brushing my teeth. and It's just a routine. Look, this is what, uh, it's just something I got to do. Mass is just another thing. No, Mass is not just another thing. Mass is not just like brushing my teeth because Mass is worshiping the one who created my teeth. Mass is about developing and continuously to connect to the one who made us, who died for us, who set us free from sin and death so that we do not have to undergo the eternal damnation that we deserve simply by our sadly distorted nature of original sin. God took care of that. God saved us. He saved us. He's saving us. He will save us. But the question is, will we let him? Will we let the grand lover of our souls into our souls? 
so that we can really know him for who he really is. By doing that, we'll discover who we really are. We're children of God. We're children of the resurrection. We are children of the light. Whether or not this country falls into communist hands or whatever by the evil Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris or that, who cares? At the end of it all, it won't matter because what matters at the end is that we go to be with Jesus. We're only given seven to ten decades tops on this planet. And we treat it like we're going to be here forever. People, eternity is coming. I just found out a news of somebody I knew from Our Lady of Pity, my old church. Um, passed away from COVID today. So I'm going to offer a prayer for him. Okay? I'm going to pray for Manny Olson. These are crazy times. A lot of people have died from this uh, disease. We have to continue to pray for them. We have to continue to pray for the souls of those that have been lost to it. We have to continue to pray to God to con to to continue to continue. Sorry, to continue to strengthen us through it and to give us clarity of mind and and the gift of discernment. When it comes to people like Taylor Marshall, Michael Voris, and Michael Mad, and the people over at um, LifeSite News and, and other people as well talking about how, you know, the Great Reset is coming. Now Joe Biden is the, uh, a fake president. He's not the real president that Trump lost, you know, lost and all that. I don't care. I didn't like Trump anyway, but I'm not crazy. I don't like Biden either. Like, I don't, I'm like, everybody is like messed up. <laughs> Right, they all got their thing. So it's kind of like, now what? What's gonna happen now? I've never been one to be into politics anyway, so it's like, ugh, whatever, you know. Well, anyway, that is my message to you all. Uh, I just wanted to share these thoughts with you because I've been in my mind. I'm gonna make more content as time goes on. Please be patient. I, I'm trying to juggle other channels and other responsibilities as a husband and, and a father. But until next time, all right? God bless you. And um, say a prayer for our, uh, our Pope. Say a prayer for our priests. Say a prayer for our bishops. Say a prayer for the world that we may get through this. And um, just ask God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because heaven is where ultimately counts. God bless you. Take care.